Namaste to everyone. Today we are going to learn a small topic from our light lesson. So let us start that. You know already in seventh class we might have learnt some properties of light. So once we'll recollect that and also along with that we'll see some more extra points also here in our seventh class. So here first thing we have to learn what is light. What is the use of light we have? Light will allow us to see. So here we have so many luminous objects around us which are producing the light. With the help of that only we are able to observe, we are able to identify any object which is present in our surroundings. So whenever light falls on an object, again it is going to reflect back. Because of that we are able to see. Here all the light is not reflected back. Some light is absorbed by the object. Remaining will be reflected. So that reflected light we are able to see. The reflected light, uh, whatever the color is there for that reflected light, that we are able to see here. So here we have a mirror. The mirror will reflect all the light from the object. And we can see the image of the same object. Whatever you are able to see in the mirror, the color of that image is same as the color of the object also. Because here mirror is reflecting all the light. Not only some, uh, some light is it's absorbing and some light it is reflecting. It's not like that. Now coming to the next one. What are the properties of light? You may be remembering what you have learnt in your 7th, 6th uh, class. So what are the properties of light? Light will travel in a straight line. The first point. And light passes through transparent medium and here it is reflected back from the opaque objects and what about translucent objects here translucent objects also will reflect the light but not that much as a opaque objects the light will travel through the translucent but not all the light rays few light rays only will travel then here we have to understand about the reflections regular and irregular here in our session we are going to observe that after completing that you can understand this what is regular and what is irregular reflections and what about the biggest source of light this is sun and here one small question we have suppose you are in a dark room can you see the objects in the room can you see objects outside the room? Explain. You are, you are there in the dark room. You are unable to see the objects. Because we are able to see the objects only when light is present there. When light is present there, then light falls on the object. Again, it reflects back. Then only we are able to see that. Otherwise, we are unable to observe any object, identify any object in our surroundings. Now, as we have the other questions, if you see on the screen, I'm showing for you. This is about the reflection. Now, once we'll go uh, for these topics, let me complete the explanation. Then again, we'll come back here. Now, just observe this diagram. Just observe the scene, what is what you are able to see on the screen. Here, you can see a small mountain, trees. You can see two mountains, actually. Actually, there is only one mountain but you are able to see two because one is the object a real object the other one is the image which is formed here we have the water this water is stationary stagnant water is there it's not flowing there is no disturbance for that so that is why we are able to see the clear image of the mountain and also the small uh, trees small small uh, plants we have all these we are able to see clearly now just observe the second image what i'm showing here also you can see object along with that image but that image is not that much clear. The water is having some disturbance because of the air breeze. So here another type of reflection is happening. So first picture whatever we have seen the picture is very clear. The image is very clear. There we have the reflection called as regular reflection regular reflection 
or we can also say plane reflection second image second image we are able to see diffused reflection diffused it's not clear so we can say diffused reflection or we have another name irregular reflection irregular reflection or diffused reflection okay so two types of reflections are there the one is regular the other one is irregular regular also called as plane reflection irregular also called as diffused reflection now just observe this picture here this boy wanted to uh, throw a ball towards the wall so here we have a question in which direction will the ball go if you have to hit if you have to hit the cross from the following positions so from where you are going to hit from which side position 1 position 2 position 3 from which side you will hit just think about this one now coming to this picture types of reflection as we have seen now regular we have along with that irregular reflection also is there so whenever the plane surface we have every time what happens the light is going to fall on the plane surface incident rays incident rays are nothing but the light rays which are falling on the surface and this object should be opaque so whenever it is falling there again it will be reflected back so this reflected rays these reflected rays are also parallel to each other incident rays are parallel to each other reflected rays are also parallel to each other so that is why we will get the regular reflection regular reflection because of that we are able to see the clear image coming to diffused reflection what happens here we don't have any plane surface instead of that we have uneven surface it's not plane so because of that though incident rays are parallel to each other it reflected rays are not parallel to each other so they are unable to form any uh, regular image correct image in that opaque surface like if you take the mirror you take water if you are having uneven surface we are not going to get the clear picture okay next just observe these objects we have here a mirror and uh, we have another one aluminum foil is there which is a crumbled one then we have an uh, water which is not stagnant it is having some disturbances there then we have the wooden surface that is also not even an even shining surface is there but that also is not even so in these all if you observe the mirror will form the correct image crisp image regular image then aluminum foil will form unclear image spoon forms unclear image water which is having some disturbance there because of some air breeze or uh, maybe insects will be moving in that because of that then uneven surface is there for the wood so that is why this is also forming the unclear image now here we have few questions based on the reflection state the two laws of reflection and show that diagrammatically what are the two laws of reflection first of all we have seen that we have the two types of rays incident ray and reflected ray incident ray is nothing but the light ray which is going to fall on the surface reflected ray is going to come back from the opaque surface okay so whenever it is coming back what happens here incident ray and a reflected ray are going to make some angle with another line which is called as normal what is normal here normal is nothing but the line which is drawn perpendicular to the surface wherever this light is going to fall there a line is drawn which is perpendicular that is called as a normal so with this normal incident ray will form an angle that is called as angle of incidence and reflected ray also will form an angle which is called as angle of reflection both of these will be equal 
that is the first law of reflection coming to the second law of reflection angle of uh, this uh, incident ray whatever is there then the normal and the reflected ray all these will be present in the same plane reflected ray incident ray normal all these will be present in the same plane and all these are meeting at one particular point that can be called as point of incidence point of incidence okay so these are the two laws of reflection now see the second question we have here angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection here we have options always sometimes under special conditions never this is always we are going to get the angle of reflection and angle of incidence both are equal always then we have the third question what is the angle of incidence of a ray if the reflected ray is at an angle of 90 degrees 90 degrees to the incident ray reflected ray is forming 90 degrees with incident ray means it forms the angle with normal 45 degrees because it is half half of this if you observe the diagram you can understand incident ray and reflected ray between that whatever the angle is there half of that they will make with the normal because anyway angle of incidence and angle of reflection are same so we can answer here like 45 degrees then just observe this picture children here a person is standing before the mirror whenever he is uh, raising his left hand he could see right hand is li uh, lifted by the person by the image of his image whatever he is able to see in the mirror that image is raising right hand if you want to show r capital r in your mirror we are unable to see capital r in the mirror it's shown a reverse so left becomes right right becomes left this can be called as lateral in inversion lateral inversion okay then just observe this we have a candle before the mirror okay now just observe this picture we are getting upright image only no in a mirror we are getting upright image not upside down image and the image is having the same size as the object in a mirror we are seeing here plain mirror later we will ta talk about the spherical mirrors and where is the image formed it is formed in the mirror it appears it appears in the mirror and it is having the same size distance between the object to the mirror whatever it is there it is same as the distance between image to the mirror now just observe this picture children here you have to answer some blanks are given just try to fill up the blanks the first question a person 1 uh, meter in front of a plain mirror a person 1 meter in front of a plain mirror seems to be dash meters from his image when the person is 1 meter from the plain mirror image will be 1 meter so image to the person we have to calculate 1 plus 1 2 meters if you touch your dash ear with the right hand in front of a plain mirror it will be seen in the mirror that your right ear is touched with dash just to make right as left left as right so you are touching you are touching dash ear in the mirror it is seen that right ear you are touching means actually you are touching your left ear so in the first blank you can fill it like left then you are touching your left ear with the right hand but in the image how it is shown left hand you are touching your right ear with the left hand sometimes for confusing the students they may give the questions like this just to practice this type of questions children then the image is formed dash the mirror the image is formed dash the mirror what you are going to write here behind the mirror the image is going to form behind the mirror 
then question d a person a person 5 feet tall in front of a plane mirror seems to be dash feet tall in his image here same size we have seen in plane mirror we are going to get the same size size is not changed if you go for spherical mirrors convex or concave their size will be changed but in plane mirror there is no change in the size so we can write here 5 feet then a person standing erect in front of the mirror seems to be standing dash in the image if you are standing upright then how you are shown in the mirror upright only it's not upside down it happens again in the case of spherical mirrors there also we have some conditions so in plane mirror every time we are going to get an erect image and the image is formed behind the mirror and the distance between object to the mirror is same as the distance between image and object image and mirror okay so these points you have to remember same size object means object and image are going to have the same size next just observe this picture whenever you go to a barber shop you may he may be using a large mirror will be there in front of you on the wall again along with that he may be holding small mirror so that he can show your craft what after cutting so here the first question based on this situation does light change its direction yes light is changing the direction what causes the changes the change is caused by the second mirror the light is changing the direction because of the second mirror in which direction does the ball go after changing the direction it will depend on angle of the mirror it will follow uh, the laws of reflection now we have seen two laws of reflection so this light is going to follow the laws of reflection whenever it wanted to change the direction okay then just observe this one we have some opaque objects here first one we can see a wooden almara a steel spoon a glass a glass painted from one side and still water stagnant water so in these all what we have to find out will the light be reflected of these objects will an image is formed the first one wooden almara have you seen any time no no uh, picture is shown here a steel spoon we can see but it's not clear but anyway object uh, the image is we are going to get the light is going to reflect back from the spoon if you take a glass here we will not get any reflection reflection we will not get but instead of that we will get another uh, property of the light that is refraction that is another phenomenon whenever we are having a glass without a coating we will get the refraction that you will learn in 8th class next one a glass painted from one side compulsory reflection will be there whatever plane mirror we are using there that we can take it as an example then still water that also forms a reflection because of that only we are able to see the images in the water though it is a diffused or regular whatever is there it is going to reflect the light then just observe this picture children you might have played so many times carom board you may be using your own logics your own tricks to hit a coin you will be using some directions and all so this knowledge uh, of uh, playing the carom board is very much helpful when you are drawing the ray diagrams for the uh, light rays when you want to show the image formation all this you can use your knowledge what you have in your carom board uh, playing of the carom board so here we have the questions what happens if you hit the striker hard on the carom board does the striker change the direction many times yes the striker changes the direction on hitting the sides what causes this changes whenever it hits the sides it changes the direction in which direction in which direction does the striker go after changing the direction a striker is 
deflected sometimes deflection means nothing but changing the direction sideways and sometimes in the opposite direction depending on the angle depending on the angle at which it hits the board so whenever you want to hit a coin you will be using some uh, you will see it carefully you will hit the uh, you will uh, you wanted to hit the coin with the help of your striker directly if you are unable to hit it you will be using some directions so based on the angle whatever you made again it will be reflected back again it is going to change its direction whatever angle you made there with the same angle it is going to come back so based on this knowledge you can use uh, means you can play carom board based on that knowledge of playing the carom board you can draw the ray diagrams also which we are going to get in the next topics okay